السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the lower limb lectures, I'm going to cover in this presentation the anatomy of the foot. I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt. For the anatomy of the foot, we need to cover the following objectives. First, we will revise the skeleton of the foot, the cutaneous nerve supply, the deep fascia and how it is arranged, the muscles, the vessels, and the nerves of the foot. Let's first know the different regions of the foot. So if we take a line that passes at the tarsal metatarsal joints and another line that lies at the transverse tarsal joint, the foot will be divided into three regions, the hind foot, the midfoot, and the forefoot. If we look at the dorsal surface of the skeleton of the foot, you know that it is made of three sets of bones, the tarsals, the metatarsals, and the phalanges. The tarsal bones are seven in numbers. The upper one is called the talus, which is shares in the formation of the ankle joint. The lower one, which lies against the ground, is the calcaneus, or the heel bone. The curved one here is the navicular. This one is the cupoid, and we have three cuneiforms, the medial, the intermediate, and the lateral cuneiform. We have five metatarsal bones, simply numbered from the biggest to the smallest. This is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth metatarsal bone. For the phalanges, we have proximal and distal phalanges for the big two, while the rest of the phalanges contain three, proximal, middle, and distal. The foot is designed to make an arch. We have the longitudinal arches, medial and lateral. They extend between the calcaneus posteriorly and the heads of the metatarsals anteriorly. The medial longitudinal arch is higher up than that of the lateral arch. Also, we have the transverse arches. They are a series of smaller arches that run across the foot from the talus till the heads of the metatarsals. There are many factors that support the arches of the foot. One of them is the pony factor, which represents the shape of the bones themselves. Also, the attachment of the ligaments, which are strong enough to hold the bones together and keep the shape of the arch. The most important one is the plantar calcaneonavicular ligament. Also, the long and short plantar ligaments and the plantar aponeurosis. The third factor is the tonic contraction of the muscles of the foot, especially the short muscles, and also the pull of the long tendons which suspend the arches. The skin of the sole of the foot is thick, hairless, with abundant sweat glands. That's why it may give smelly feet. It's also firmly adherent to the underlying deep fascia by numerous fibrous bands and this is very essential to give stability during walking. Also, the subcutaneous tissue contains a lot of fat which is a little bit liquefied, especially at the heel to act as a cushion to absorb shocks during walking. While the skin at the dorsum of the foot is thin, hairy and freely mobile. At the skin of the dorsum of the foot, we have many nerves that share in its nerve supply. We have the saphenous nerve that carries sensation from the medial side of the foot as far as the ball of the big two or the head of the first metatarsal bone. On the lateral side of the foot and little two, the sural nerve carries its sensation from this area. The deep perineal nerve supplies the adjacent sides of the big two and the second two or the first cleft. The medial and the lateral plantar nerves supply the nail beds or the distal phalanges of the tooth. The rest of the dorsum of the foot is supplied by the superficial perineal nerve. While the sole of the foot is supplied as follows, the heel area supplied by the medial calcaneal branch of the posterior tibial nerve, the medial two-thirds of the sole of the foot with the medial three and half twos supplied by the medial plantar nerve, while the lateral third of the sole and the lateral one and half twos supplied by the lateral plantar nerve. The medial side of the foot 
is supplied by the saphenous, while the lateral side here is supplied by the shortened nerve. The deep fascia is thickened at the sole of the foot to form the plantar aponeurosis, which is triangular in shape occupies the central part of the sole of the foot. It is attached posteriorly by its apex into the calcaneus, while its base splits into five slips to join the connective tissue around the fibrous flexor sheath of the tooth. They are also connected by ligaments that limit the abduction of the tooth. The deep fascia of the sole is very important since it gives a firm attachment to the overlying skin it protects the underlying soft tissue, including the vessels, nerves, tendons, and their synovial teeth. It also helps in maintaining the arches of the foot intact, since their length is much shorter than the length of the arch of the foot. We have one muscle at the dorsum of the foot, which is called the extensor digitorum previs. It arises from the upper surface of the calcaneus and splits into four tendons for the median four tooth. The one that is inserted into the big two is called the extensor hallucis previs. It takes its nerve supply from the deep peroneal nerve and it extends the tooth regardless of the position of the ankle. While the muscles that lies at the sole of the foot are arranged into four layers, the first layer contains the abductor hallucis, the abductor digiti minimi, and the flexor digitorum previs. The abductors arise from the calcaneus and insert into the proximal phalanges of the big two or the little two. They act as flexors and seldom as abductors since the range of abduction of our toes is limited by the shoes. The flexor digitorum previs arises from the calcaneus and the overlying plantar aponeurosis and inserts into the middle phalanges of the lateral four toes. This muscle is equivalent to the flexor digitorum superficialis in the upper limb. Deep to the first layer lies the second layer. It contains the longer flexors of the tooth, the flexor hallucis longus tendon and the flexor digitorum longus tendon, and two muscles associated with the flexor digitorum longus. They are the flexor digitorum accessorius and the four lambricles. The flexor hallucis longus inserts into the distal phalanx of the big two. It is crossed by the flexor digitorum longus, which splits into four tendons to the distal phalanges of the lateral four tooth. The lambricles and the flexor digitorum accessories are attached to the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. The flexor digitorum accessories arises from the calcaneus and inserts into the flexor digitorum longus tendon and it corrects the line of pull of the flexor digitorum longus and provides flexion to the lateral four tooth regardless of the position of the ankle. While the lambricles are four in number and they arise from the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus and inserts into the digital extensor expansion and the proximal phalanges of the lateral four tooth. They are very essential muscles during walking since they maintain the extension at the interphalangeal joints. Beneath this layer lies the third layer of the sole of the foot. It's made of three muscles, the flexor hallucis previs, which lies against the first metatarsal bone. The flexor digiti minimi lies against the fifth metatarsal bone. And the adductor hallucis, which has two heads, the transverse head arises from the ligaments holding the heads of the metatarsal bones together. And an oblique head arises from the bases of the second, third, and fourth metatarsals. Both heads unite together and insert into the base of the proximal phalanx of the big two. Beneath this layer lies the fourth layer, which is made of the tendons that play a role in holding the arches, namely the peroneus longus tendon, the tibialis posterior tendon, and then we have the dorsal and the plantar inter osseae. The peroneus longus grooves the cupoid bone to insert into the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform bone, while the tibialis posterior has a wider 
insertion into the navicular bone, about two-thirds of its insertion into this bone, and also spreads to all tarsals except talus and all metatarsals except the first and the fifth. And as I mentioned, they hold the arches of the foot. We need to focus here on the interossei. The dorsal interossei, we will remember them by the mnemonic DAP. They perform abduction of the tooth. And we need to know that the axis of abduction is at the second two. So if you move away from the second two, this is called abduction. They arise from the inner sides of all metatarsals and insert into the bases of the proximal phalanges of the second, third, and fourth tooth. And as I said, they abduct the tooth away from the second tooth and also flex the metatarsophalangeal joints and extend the interphalangeal joint. Remember that the second tooth is the axis of movement, so it can be abducted either to the medial side or to the lateral side. That's why it has two dorsal interossei inserted into it. The plantar interossei, we will remember the reaction by the word pad. The plantar will perform adduction of the tooth. So the tooth are adducted towards the second one. They arise from the medial sides of the shafts of the third, fourth, and fifth metatarsals and insert into the bases of the proximal phalanges and the extensor expansions of the third, fourth, and fifth tooth. They adduct the tooth and flex the metatarsophalangeal joints and extend the interphalangeal joints. Remember that the second tooth is the axis of movement, so it has no abductors. The arteries at the dorsum of the foot represented by the dorsalis bedes artery which is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery in front of the ankle joint. It terminates by passing inferiorly between the two heads of the first dorsal interosseous muscle to join the deep plantar arch. For the venous drainage at the dorsum of the foot, the deep veins that accompany the arches will follow the deep venous system, while the superficial veins will collect and form the dorsal venous arch which lies at the dorsal surface of the foot over the metatarsals. Its medial end will give rise to the great saphenous vein, which terminates at the femoral vein, while its lateral end will give the short saphenous vein, which will terminate at the popliteal vein. At the sole of the foot, we have two arteries, the medial and the lateral plantar arteries. They both arise from the posterior tibial artery. So the medial plantar artery is the smaller of the two terminal branches of the posterior tibial artery. It supplies the medial side of the big two, while the lateral plantar artery, which is the larger of the two terminal branches of the posterior tibial artery, curve medially at the base of the fifth metatarsal to form the plantar arch. So if we talk a little bit about the plantar arch, it is the continuation of the lateral plantar artery at the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. It curves medially and joins the dorsalis pedis artery in the first intermetatarsal space. It gives plantar metatarsal branches that splits at the clefts between the twos into plantar digital branches. So it supplies all the adjacent sides of the twos and also the lateral side of the little two. For the nerves of the sole of the foot, we have the medial plantar nerve and also the lateral plantar nerve. They both arise as uh, terminal branches of the posterior tibial nerve. Each contains muscular branches, cutaneous branches, and articular branches. For the medial plantar nerve, it supplies the medial two-thirds of the sole of the foot and the medial three and a half toes till the level of the nail bits. Its motor branches only to four muscles at the sole of the foot, two in the first layer, the abductor hallucis and the flexor digitorum previs, one in the second layer, which is the first lumbricor, and one in the third layer, which is the flexor hallucis previs. It also gives articular branches to small joints of the foot. The lateral plantar nerve 
is also one of the two terminal branches of the posterior tibial nerve. It will divide at the base of the fifth metatarsal bone into superficial and deep branches. The deep branch is motor to all muscles of the sole of the foot except the four muscles supplied by the medial plantar nerve. While the superficial branch will be sensory to the plantar surface of the lateral third of the sole and the lateral one and a half twos. In addition, it gives articular branches to the small joints of the foot. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. And do not forget to hit the notification bell so you can know if I upload another video.